With this strong knowledge of our industry combined with her passion and drive, she's here to help all of us grow our businesses and increase sales. So let's give Jennifer Bagley, the CEO of TI Web Group, a warm and so welcome. Good morning. How are you? Good. How is the game? Good. How's your sleep? Great. Have you had enough coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, you guys. Thank you so much. Can you guys hear me without the other mic? In the back? You good? This echoes in here. Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate everybody. Steve West, Pam, thank you everyone at Johnstone. You guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about probably your favorite subject. Technology and marketing. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you need it? Yes. Okay, well I can get one yes. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So let's just start off real quick. How do you take yourself out of being a business owner? How do you shop if you need something? You want to replace your roof, you're looking for a housekeeper, I don't know, shoes. Um, <laughs> I have very few women in here. <laughs> All right, how do you shop? What do you do? Online. You go online? What do you do? Online. You go what? Amazon.com. <laughs> I am the biggest Amazon. I should own a tremendous amount of stock in Amazon. <laughs> what else do you do? Referrals. Referrals, fantastic. You ask a? A friend. How do people ask friends today? Any ideas? Facebook, social media, fantastic. In the last 12 months, so, so we're going to do two things. So far what I've heard is online and referrals. Would you agree? Okay, in the last 12 months, excluding online and referrals, how many of you have made a purchase from a company or service provider and you were not previously an existing customer? from a door hanger or a flyer. Raise your hand, turn around. TV. You guys should look around if you're in the front. Radio. Newspaper. Oh, okay, we have radio. What'd you buy? Um, nothing. You just wanted to raise your hand. <laughs> He's like, dang, all these zeros. I'm in, nothing, okay. <laughs> Radio, what'd you buy? Garage door. Garage door, how'd it work? Really Who'd you buy it from? Great garage door. And you remember. Yeah. Awesome. Any other purchases in last year? Yes. Fantastic. And you remember the name? Yeah. How did you everything was good? I don't know I got a bit. I just got a bit from some salt. Oh, you haven't bought it yet. Well, I made the decision, but Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Any newspaper? How about billboards? Brochures. What else do you go to school for marketing to learn? How's this going so far? So if I go to school for a marketing degree today, what do I get to learn? Media buying, still. How many of you have spent money on radio, television, newspaper, door hangers, flyers, postcards, and anything else? Raise your hand. So, we have we have one um, fibber <coughs> and two actual purchases. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and two actual purchases in 12 months. But when we launch our own company, all of a sudden we start doing what, 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 who is doing? What everyone else is doing. But I can talk to thousands of people. I would literally rather listen to a group of soccer moms tell me how they make their buying decisions than a marketing agency any day. Because you know what they say? The truth. the truth. It's that simple. People buy two ways today, either online or via, via referral. But even when you get a referral, let me ask you this. How many of you have gotten a referral to a service provider or product and so forth in the last year? Raise your hand, look around. Keep them up. Okay, you guys should look around because I want you need these numbers. These numbers are important. All right, how many of you Googled them first? Raise your hand, look around. How many of those did you not purchase because you couldn't find them or there was negative information? These numbers are going up. You guys, the great part is I love, I'm actually, my background, I was VP of Global Logistics and Supply Chain for some major retailers. So I wasn't born and raised in the advertising industry so I don't have to be rewired. <laughs> the problem is, 
is that most of the time people are investing in things that their competition is doing. They see a flyer. I always tease real estate agents about it because when you're a realtor, before you become a realtor, you go to the mail, you pick out all your mail, then where do you go? You go to the trash. Then all of a sudden you get your real estate license and all of a sudden you see somebody's face with their big, big hair. <laughs> and next thing they know, they want to buy what? Flyers. All of a sudden they want to do a big postcard campaign. But they previously went to the trash every time they went to their mailbox. So in this business, it's really important that we know how are we positioned for referrals and how are we positioned online. Fair? Yeah? Yes. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's required. Do, how many of you have kids? Anyone have a kid that's between like 13 and 18 or grandkids, nieces, nephews? Yes? What about a toddler? Anyone know any toddlers? Have you seen them on an iPhone? <laughs> Do they make you feel slow? <laughs> In a thousand days, my 16-year-old is either going to be my customer, my competitor, my employee, or my employer. How does that sit? <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It's not going to lessen. Does that make sense? So if you, if this entire room all raised their hands at, I shop online, I get referrals, and I check them out, where should you put your marketing dollars? We can re-quiz. <laughs> Just kidding. The game got you guys. <laughs> I feel you. I get it. This is the problem. This stuff is complicated. That's what online looks like. It's complicated. There's no way around it. It's technology. It's ever-changing. It's constantly moving. Everything that I taught somebody a year ago is different today. The speed in which technology is evolving, is it faster than most business owners? It is. So we got to keep up. Here's the challenge. Marketing people are evil. How many of you had, had bad experiences with web companies? Raise them. Bad experience with SEO companies. Broken promises. I'm going to sing a country song in a second. <laughs> <laughs> they took your house. They took your truck. They took your girl. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the challenge. We have, there's a lot of issues. I get it. I absolutely get it. I hear hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of horror stories about promises, stuff just not happening, not getting results, not improving, and everything else. I totally get it. So we'll address that. Would you agree these are problems? Raise your hand. One, marketing people are the boogeyman. They're evil. I almost said the devil, but I, I took it off. Yes? yes? How do you know who to trust? Is that a problem? Yes. How do you even know what questions to ask? Is that a problem? Yes. Trust me, it's the same thing for a woman trying to buy their air conditioning unit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They feel the same. All right. What should my expectations be? Is that a challenge? I don't know if I have $100 a month or if I have $1,000 a month or I have $5,000 a month to spend on my marketing. What should it net me? The easy question is hopefully more. <laughs> right? You've been burned. We have that. And bottom line is this stuff's complicated. It's not just complicated, it's constantly changing. We have a lot of different vendors that are coming to us all the time trying to tell us how they can make us a whole bunch of money with yellow book advertising or upgrading our Google account or upgrading our web page. So it's, it's really hard to try to figure out who's going to give us the most bang for our dollar. So essentially, this is one of our clients, Brian. He's talking about the fact that you guys get hit up for a from a tremendous amount of people trying to sell you something. Yes? yes. Who calls you? Every, he said, everyone. Who calls? Google constantly. Okay, Google will never call you. I'm so happy you said that. Google will never call you. Ever. They don't have a call center. They will never call you. But there are plenty of companies who will call you and tell you they're calling you from Google. And guess what? I saved position number one for you. I saved it. I have it. It's for you. It's only four fifty a month. <laughs> 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 they, how many of you have been called by somebody that said they're with Google? 
Oh. I actually, so if, I'll have to show you if you're interested in a humorous day. So I actually, I have them call all the time, even my own company. So I record them, put them on screen, <laughs> they're on YouTube, and I ask them tons of questions. So are you telling me you're from Google? Yeah. I'm like, oh. And you own position number one for what key phrase? They'll say, oh, it's for AC repair in Seattle. I'm like, oh, awesome. There's only 72 million pages in that bucket. And you own number one of 72 million for me? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> You're going to have really bad karma. OK. <laughs> so, so I get it. Google's not going to call you. You guys are going to get called, I mean, all over the board. Uh, I don't want to go through company names because that would be bad, other than the people pretending to be Google because that's just unethical. <laughs> there are companies that will call you. They want to build you a website. It's a landing page. They want to give you their phone number to put on your site so they can track their leads, which you don't actually get. And if you cancel, who keeps that number? They do. They do. No, 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 and no. So number one, if they say they're from Google, click. Number two, if they want to give you a phone number and they own it, click, <laughs> okay? Absolutely not. There are no guarantees. If somebody says, I guarantee you a page one position, they're full of it. There's no way they should be offering that. It takes work and it takes a really, really strong bond and partnership between the marketing company and you. Okay, here's the problem. Because there's so much garbage out there, number one, we got to talk about the cost of not doing it, right? Because the cost is expensive. A lot of times when you're weighing marketing activities, the first thing you're doing is trying to calculate how much is the bill. But the biggest equation we have to think about is not how much the bill is, it's what's the expense for the lost opportunities of not doing it or doing it wrong. Does that make sense? So the, the actual equation, is not what the bill is. It's the bill, the timing behind when your investment can produce results in excess of your investment, right? And or the missed opportunity cost for not being properly positioned and not bringing the business in you could be. Does that make sense? Okay, bad vendor selection. Manado. <laughs> That's tough, I get it. Redos, switching. So the, the challenge is, is this is all interconnected. If you're not sure what questions to ask, it's going to be hard to pick a vendor. Even if you do pick a vendor, if you're not a technical expert at all this garbage, how are you going to know what to expect or what time frame? All of that equals not a fun experience. So redos. You get your website live. You expect your phone to start ringing off the hook in how many days? I know. A furnace, you have one house, one <laughs> furnace, possibly two. <laughs> this is a problem online. So have you guys went onto Google and you've typed in like AC repair and then your city? Have you ever noticed the little numbers in the very top left-hand corner? Very top left corner of Google. Have you ever seen them? Okay. In the very top left, it'll say blank 10 out of blank for every search. So if you have a pen and paper, write these down. All right. One key phrase, think about it like a, uh, like a filing drawer. I'll tell you when to write, but I just wanted to get your pens and paper. Sorry. Okay. How many of you have seen Bruce Almighty? Yes. Okay. Do you remember when he goes into that warehouse and God's in there and God's like, everything you've ever said, everything you've ever thought, everything you've ever done is inside this drawer. Okay, imagine a filing drawer flying across this entire room because you asked it one question. AC repair in, tell me your city. Fairbowl. Where? Fairbowl. Fairbowl. Did I say that right? Okay. AC repair in Fairbowl. Anybody got a phone? Look it up. Tell me what the number is in the top left corner or iPad, tablet. And I don't care if you take pictures. I don't care if your phone's out. I don't even care if it rings. <laughs> Most people, put your phones away. If you're going to take a picture, get this side though. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, somebody, how many? 
65,900. 65,900. That would be considered a low geo phrase. You could expect with a killer SEO company and content, the right content, to get ranked on page one of Google. And if you have a website designed for conversions, it looks good, it doesn't look like you built it yourself. <laughs> you could expect your phone to start ringing in 60 to 90 days for that phrase. 65,000 competitive pages inside this drawer. And you wanna be number what of 65,000? One. One, where do the phone calls take place? When you guys are shopping, where do you click? Top 10. Top 10, anyone else? <coughs> Top one or two, anyone else? Three or four. Three or four, okay. So we're gonna say one to two represents about 60, 70, 80%, depending on who you are, of the total clicks. One through three, actually. When you get into four through 10, you're dropping down to about 15%. How many do you think click on page two? It's Ten immeasurable. Ten it's close to zero. <laughs> Anyone click to page two when you're doing a search? Raise your hand. Not when you're searching for yourself because you're trying to find your own website. <laughs> page three, page four. <laughs> Depends if they're referred, okay. Awesome, so it was two people, it's about 2% that are gonna go past that, unless you're trying to find your own website, wondering where it is in that big bucket of, <laughs> of pages. All right, anyone else? Give me a city. Rochester. Pick one. Rochester. Rocks? Rochester. <laughs> Rochester. 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 Rochester, got it. <laughs> the room echoes. <laughs> I think you're back here. Okay, hey, somebody look up uh, furnace repair, Rochester. And tell me how many pages are in the back? Top left corner. You got it? I'm counting on you. 376,000. <laughs> 300 and what? 376,000. So that's borderline low to mid. Could be anywhere between 90 days and six months. Okay? Yes. So I want you, now you can write it down. Okay? Put 1,000 to 300,000 low equals 90 days. 1,000 to 300,000 low equals 90 days. 300,000, around 700,000 medium, six months. 700,000 plus, can be nine plus months, depending on if it's 700,000 or 72 million. Does that make sense? So think about the big filing drawer. If I look for AC repair in Seattle, that's like, what was it, 42 million. And you wanna be one of 42 million. Is that gonna take a little time? And a lot of effort. Okay, so just like a filing system, you have to have one piece of paper, i.e. one page per phrase and location. So just like if I took a file folder, at the very top I have a label and that label says whatever, whatever title, right? If that label says heating and air conditioning furnace, indoor air quality, air conditioning repair, air conditioning installation, air conditioning maintenance, furnace maintenance, furnace installation, indoor air quality, UV lights, I can keep going. How are you gonna file it? How would you file the piece of paper in your own office? Other. <laughs> okay, if I have a page that's called our services, and that's the label, how are you gonna file it? Under our services. Anyone want to go to Google and type in our services to see where you would fall? How many? Anyone see the number? I believe it's <laughs> over a billion. 4.69. What is it? 4.69. Billion? Billion. 4.69 billion. Type in FAQ. That's an awesome page. Think about it like a filing system. Our services page, 
falls into the same bucket with everybody else that has our services page because that's the label we give it and we tell Google, file this in your drawer. How many is FAQ? Uh, 1.68. 1 1.6 billion pages. How many of you have a page on your website called our services? I know you don't want to raise your hands now. <laughs> Fibbers. <laughs> How many of you have a page on your website called FAQ? Yes. This is a problem. FAQ is a question. Have you ever went to Google and typed in a question? Yes. People have questions all the time, but FAQs are frequently asked questions that should be in a blog area with a category called FAQ instead of on one page that we put in a drawer called FAQ because it goes in the, we're just going to label them all. Here are your junk drawer pages. Home, about, our services, FAQ, contact us. All go in what kind of a drawer? Junk, junk drawer. All right. I totally skipped the press. Say that again. All right. I love that question. You guys want to go complicated or too much at the I game thought, last I night? We already did. <laughs> no. We've just been watching a movie to this point. <laughs> Okay, that's an awesome question. I'm going to answer it. So if you have a headache, still close your ears. <laughs> but this is important. So number one, there's what's called a permalink, which is everything after the dot com. www.northern... Help. Heating what's your website? Northernheatingandairconditioning.com forward slash air hyphen conditioning, conditioner hyphen repair hyphen where? Northern. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> okay, that's number one, is the permalink. It's everything in the URL past the .com. Number two is your, it's called an H1 or a heading one tag. It's the big label on the page. You can only have one H1 per page. Number three is subtitles, heading twos, heading threes. Number four is in the content. If your content's talking about everything all over the sun, it's not going to validate. That's how, well, I'll leave that for another day. So it has to be in the content, which is called keyword density and variations. AC can also be referred to as? Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Okay, that's what you call it. That's, the, that's what it produces, right? What else? What is it? It's a? Air conditioner. How many of you, so try and pull yourself, okay, how many of you think your spouses, <laughs> if they needed help with their air conditioner, would search for AC repair versus air conditioner repair versus air conditioning repair versus cooling, cooling repair? It's there. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you would say AC? Raise your hands. How many of you think air conditioner, air conditioning, cooling repair? It just sounds odd to me. This is Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Texas for 10 years, honey. <laughs> okay, so this is the thing. It all depends. It depends on your location. It depends on where you're at. But across the board, with the, we've got clients that stretch the entire United States, Air conditioner tends to have more monthly searches than AC and air conditioning. AC being second, air conditioning being third, cooling very small. Very, very small. How many of you have a page that's all about cooling? You know, I raise our hands. <laughs> okay, so if you want to get found for AC repair and air conditioner repair, what do you need to have? How many pages? One page. Two. Two. What about heater versus heating versus furnace? What about electric furnace versus gas furnace? Am I starting to make sense? We have to have one page. It's not about us. You guys are actually, because you're technical experts in your industry, you're probably the worst person to ask as far as what pages you should have because you refer to things very, very technical, whereas a consumer doesn't. One of the issues, we do focus groups with consumers all the time. And you have to remember, you guys have two audiences you have to serve. 
Anybody want to guess your first audience? Homeowner. What is it? Homeowner. Homeowner. Real people. <coughs> Who's the second audience? Who do you have to please before you get to be in front of the homeowner? Google. Google, which is a robot. It is a robot. It's a mathematical equation that does not communicate, doesn't call, doesn't talk to you, and it changes relatively frequently, but there's some consistence. So in order to get in front of people, you have to please Google. This is the challenge, though. I'll go back to this. I have ADD. So if I leave, I always come back. Okay. <laughs> Redos and continual growth. How many of you have read on your website over and over and over? <coughs> How many of you have not read on your website in the last two years? I thought so. <laughs> okay. Okay, the other thing is, another big issue is working with vendors and not strategists. This takes a major collaborative approach. If you go talk to any marketing agency and they don't understand the difference between uh, heating and air conditioning AC versus air conditioner, or they don't understand what is indoor air quality, what are all the different services that fall underneath that and so forth, they're gonna have a hard time. If you don't have regular strategy meetings with somebody who understands how to build and grow a business, not just market it, how many of you have an exit strategy in place? Yeah? How many of you are that is even part of the equation? Nada. How many of you are ready to just blow and go build this baby? Tons of new business. How many of you have no idea? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, next major, major issue, working with what I call the triple Fs. Having somebody from the triple Fs build your website. Anyone want to guess what they are? Friends. First one. Friends. Friends. Second, family. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give you my mic. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, right? I'm not going to repeat what you say. How about we use fools and felons? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it though. Yeah. Okay. Next one, do it yourselfers. You know people know if you do it yourself. When you look at your website, how does it make you feel? You don't have to say it. <laughs> how does it make you feel? Does it feel professional? Classy, easy to get around, easy to navigate, easy to make a phone call or click on a form or schedule service, request an estimate, handle an emergency. Is it easy? When I go to your website, do I know who you are, what you do, where you do it, and how to reach you like this? Yes? All right. And finally, the hiring a person to do it all. How many of you have hired a guy to do your website or a girl? One person. I've made the same mistake myself, okay? This is a challenge. Well, we'll just leave this. Same old thinking, same old results. We have to change how we think in order to change our results on, this on, the, on the reverse end. This is what a person has to think about, whether it's you as a business owner. Do you guys believe that you're in the business of HVAC and marketing if you're a business owner? We have to be. The problem is, I hear salesmen and I hear people want to sell you stuff and say they're going to do all this. Follow through is always the issue. So here's the challenge. These are just a handful of the type of people you need on your project. So here we have project manager, account manager, SEO specialist, designer, developer, web strategist, content writer, design coordinator, chief strategist. We can go into pay-per-click writers. We can go into video producers, graphics designers, social media marketing. If you hire one person, are they going to be an expert at all of these? What's it going to cost you to hire one person? Guess? Too much. Okay. <laughs> You have to have all these people in place. I'm good at this stuff, and I cannot do all this by myself. I know enough about code to challenge a developer. <laughs> I know enough about design to challenge a designer. If you could find one human being that had all of these qualities under one belt, we would hire them and pay them a tremendous amount of money. The reality is they don't come in the same box. They're not birthed in the same body at all. How many of you know a coder, a developer. I mean, if you have known one, what are they like? Different. <laughs> <laughs> Third. 
Introvert. Nerd? Yeah. Introvert? Yeah. What else? Like their idea of, of a Friday night out could be rocking out with some Red Bull, Heineken's, Birkenstocks, online video game, friends on the internet called Toxic M4. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a developer. Are developers creative, pretty? Do they make things pretty? So if you have a developer build your website, it's probably going to function very, very well, but be ugly as sin. <laughs> Okay, what about designers? Anybody know a creative designer, graphics designer? What are they like? <laughs> what else are they like? Outgoing. And Outgoing. They dress nice? Yeah. What would you think their living room looks like? I know what it looks like. It looks, ni it looks nice. <laughs> would they go out on a Friday night? Oh, yeah. With real people? Yeah. And they'd be styling, huh? <laughs> okay. Anybody know an engineer? Yep. What are they like? Smart. Smart. What else? Meticulous. Meticulous. Data driven. Spreadsheets. What else? Straightforward. Straightforward. Yes. Does it take them a while to process stuff? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because they're reviewing the what? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> they're reviewing the numbers. That's an SEO strategist. I have the director, Mandeep is in the back. He's the director of our entire SEO and pay-per-click team in the back. They are technical thinkers. Very, very technical. They analyze the data. It's not as much about pretty. If you want your SEO work to convert into new business, it has to be both. It has to be both. Now you have all of these people fight. So what about social media people? Anybody know any social media people? What are they like? We, <laughs> crazy. Friends with everybody. If you were in Seattle, they would say the gayer the better. <laughs> you didn't get that here. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> They're friends with everybody. They love people. They just want to be friends. Okay. <laughs> These are very, very different people. Now, if you imagine, it's kind of like taking your accountant, your attorney, and your CPA and putting them in a room. They're going to what? They're going to fight. They're going to duke it out. So not only do you need these people, these technical experts, but you also need chief strategists, entrepreneurs, people that understand operationally how it's going to impact the business, financially how is it going to impact the business, time, seasons, budget, <coughs> exit strategy. What are you trying to ultimately do with your business? Are you trying to grow? Are you trying to prep it to sale? Are you trying to prep it to hand down to your kids? There has to be more methodology that's put into place. But the one thing that is for sure is the guy will not be able to do it. If you trade a website for a guy, you're going to do their AC. He's going to build your website on the side. We have to think about this. In the very beginning, I asked you how you guys bought. Everyone raised their hands to two things, and this is the same across the world. One, referral to the internet. Should I be trading my most valuable asset for somebody who I'm going to get part-time effort from and one person who can't do all that? Probably not. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, they did a really good job of converting the good looks into a functional website. And she under they understand, their designers know, uh, the coders know what it takes to make that website work and to make it search engine friendly, all the other things that really make it work. So not only does it look good, it has to function correctly. Here is another thing to consider when you're looking at companies and evaluating them. Where are they based? How many days a, work, a week do they work? Because what you guys need, you need powerful leveraged assets. You need people working around the clock to take care of it. In our company, we literally have people stretched across the entire country and around the world and run six days a week usually eight hour shifts, starting from eight in the morning until about eight in the morning. So what does that do for your business? Versus having someone come in and they, nine to five, they've got a list of 300 things that need to take place, but they have eight hours during the day to get it done. And they're not subject matter experts. Is that tough? Yes? All right, so what are the pros, you guys? What are the pros of bringing in an internal marketing person? Are there, let me back up. Are there any internal marketing people in the room? 
<laughs> other than the owners. <laughs> okay, so I can address that. <laughs> when, when you have an internal marketing person, they should be your main point person with your web company. There, you've got to make a list. What are the things that only you can do? And what are the things everybody else can do? They need to focus on the space. That's what are the things only you can do? They can take pictures. They can generate content. They know when your promotions are. They know when the season's changing. They know when a storm's coming. So they can notify all the people to get the work done. Make sense? All right. This is the goal. You have to leverage technology to convert time to cash. And you have to do it as fast as possible. Does that make sense? No? Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have too much coffee this morning? <laughs> I think it's us, not you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we, uh, we have to compress time. We have to get results faster. OK, we have to learn how do we leverage technology to turn our time into new revenue. Does that make sense? Got it. Yes? <laughs> and we've got to do it faster. So if you contract with someone to do your website and this is their first time in the HVAC industry, how much time are you doing prepping and planning and telling them what happens in your industry? That's, is that compressed time? No. What you need is, you need someone that comes in and says, this is what you need, these are the pages you need, this is how it needs to be formulated, these are the type of call to actions you need in order to be able to get your business moving. Now, let's start marketing. You literally need to be able to, from a design standpoint, have that website done, up, and ready. You could write down production before perfection. <coughs> have it done, up, and ready, and ready to start marketing right away. Here's simple, simple goals. If people do business two ways, via referral and via the internet, one, you need to get more traffic to your website. Would you agree? Yes? In order to get more traffic to your website, where do you need to be placed? Top three. Top three for what? Go. Everything. <laughs> Easy way out. Everything. What do you need to be in the top three for? Tell me. Cool. Air conditioner, air conditioning. Right on. Cooling. In Buffalo a whole bunch of cities. <laughs> okay. What else do you need to be on the top of Google for? Top three. If you can write really fast, <laughs> if you can write really fast, okay? So I'm going to give you one bucket, just one. AC service, AC repair, AC installation, AC maintenance, AC replacement. One bucket. <clears throat> Same bucket, duplicate it, but instead of AC, use air conditioner. Instead of air conditioner, use air conditioning. Okay, same thing with furnace, heater. So you're, you have a primary key phrase, which is air conditioning, air conditioner, AC. You have a secondary, which is service, repair, maintenance, installation, replacement. Easy enough? Yes? Okay. All right, so next. That's top of the funnel. The next is you have to get leads. So all of your marketing efforts should be three things. Connect, engage, convert. What does a conversion mean? Sell. Sale. Call to action. Okay. It can be a sale. That can be a conversion. What is it? Call to action. Call to action. Absolutely. And a call to action can make <clears throat> them do what? Spend money. <laughs> Make a phone call. <clears throat> How many of you have gone to a website from your phone and you go to the site and as soon as you pull it up, you want to call them and there's a number at the top and you tap it. It's nothing happens. And then you stretch the phone out. <laughs> and then you try and find the contact us button and you're like, I can click that phone number. I know I'll be able to. And you stretch it out, you lay it down. <laughs> And you stretch it out, and you're still looking for a phone number you can tap. <laughs> yes? Okay. One, your website has to be mobile responsive. <laughs> Otherwise, they do this. <laughs> and anybody familiar with mobile responsive? 
So what it means is, is it maintains aspect ratio. So really, it stays big when people are looking at it. It's not tiny. Let me look. Um, <laughs> she said no. Are you kidding? No, I'm just kidding. Ours is. <laughs> awesome. <I'm just> <laughs> so one, it needs to be mobile responsive. Needs to be shaped. The, the nerds are going to say it needs to have 3,000 style sheets so that everything can be displayed on different devices. Okay. It needs to reshape itself and stay big, just taking containers. If you have three containers across the top, when you go responsive, this one goes here, this one goes here, and it reshapes itself and it makes it long. That's number one. Number two, if you have a phone number on your site, it needs to be click to call, integrated with Google. If you have an address on your site, it needs to be integrated with Google Maps. Maps. So if they click on it, they can go. <laughs> The first way you'll lose business is your website's not responsive. Second way you'll lose business, <laughs> when they want to throw their phone into the top of the ceiling. We have to make sure those two things are done. How many of you know that's taken care of on your site? Those two things. Okay, how many of you have asked for it continually and still can't get it done? <laughs> I know every story, trust me. All right, so we got to get leads. People are finicky. They're kind of interesting. Some people love to make phone calls. How many of you love to place a call? You'd rather place a call than fill out a form? Kathy Marshall, of course. Okay, how many of you would rather fill out a web form and wait for somebody to call you back? Raise your hand and look around. Mm. How many would, would rather schedule an appointment for the future and know that the time's set so you're not waiting on somebody to call you back and you don't have to call right now? T raise your hand, turn around so you can see. Okay. How many of you would rather send an email? How many of you would have your spouse make the call for you? <laughs> There's my hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I need to ask her. <laughs> All right. So we have to make sure these things are done. The, the challenge, one of the things with marketing is we make decisions based on our own personal preference and trust me, your personal preference really doesn't matter at all because you're not trying to sell to just yourself. You're trying to sell to a whole bunch of unique people who have different ways that they like to function and operate different. Some want to text, some want to call, some are too busy, they don't want to talk right now and they don't want you to call them back, they just want to fill out a form. Some people want an online estimate. So one small tweak Instead of saying, get a quote, if you change the button to online estimate and you have an online estimator, which takes down how many square feet they have, how many bedrooms they have, how many units they have, and so forth, you're collecting more data up front instead of name, phone number, address, comments, or what do you need help with. So when you call them, you have a more educated conversation right up front. You know when their house was built, you know how square footage and so forth. However, they think when they're filling out that form, there's a possibility I might get a quote at the end of this document. I'm going to hit submit. <laughs> okay? So you've got to be really careful that every call to action is different. Get leads critical. Every page, there has to be a call to action. The bottom of your footer, it's on every page of your entire website. Very, very important spot. The top of your website, very important spot. Next one, convert into, survey says, Sales, absolutely. Next, who should your number one source or where should your number one source of new business come from if you really have your stuff together? Internal customers, existing customers. Existing customers. If you really have your stuff together, your existing customers, one, retention is critical. How many of you have regular maintenance programs you sell? Anyone on monthly subscriptions? Fantastic. Recurring revenue. I love that. All right. We went from not existing on the internet whatsoever to actually getting ranking in first and second page in a matter of two months. And we're excited to see uh, what we can do with this thing in the months to come. These are all the different elements that we have to think about over time. It doesn't all have to happen at once. Your website, most important. That's at the very top. I know that's small for you guys. The development of your website. If your website was developed five years ago, it's, it's done. It's, 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 it's in a grave. It should be. <laughs> and it, it, no. Um, online scheduling. So you guys have two different types of scheduling, and we have to make sure there's separation between operations and marketing. On the operations side, you have scheduling and dispatching. Okay, Scheduling your texts. On the marketing side, you have allowing the consumer to schedule a good time to speak with you. 
which is management of leads and opportunities. How many of you have a database that includes email addresses for all the leads and opportunities that have ever came from you in addition to what's in your accounting system, your customers? Anyone? Okay, we need that. That's going to be really, that, that in the future, as your marketing grows and you get these things done, it's going to play a big role. Search engine optimization, pay-per-click. How many of you know the difference between SEO, organic optimization, and pay-per-click? Yes? Okay, so we need to know this. <laughs> this is, when you go to Google, you notice at the very top of Google there's like three spots and then it goes into usually like a map, and then it has listings, 10 listings specifically. And then on the right hand side you see other <laughs> listings. The top three or two or one, those are ads. Those are pay-per-click ads. The right side, those are pay-per-click ads. The difference is, in a pay-per-click environment, you set a budget that you're willing to spend with Google. You can have hundreds of key phrases and locations. Not 10, hundreds. And as people click on those links, it pulls from your budget. So you pay per click. So 14 bucks here, $3 here, $7 here, depending on what the bid price is. Where organic is going to be that 10 slots that you guys said you click in. And then you have maps, which is local business listings. That's your Google business listings. How many of you know you have a Google <coughs> Places set up? Okay, Google Business Listings is free. Go home, write it down, set up a Google Business Listings account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you're gonna need that for your business. Very, very important. All right, pay-per-click, social media marketing. You good to go on social media? Necessary evil? Would prefer not to? <laughs> All right, content writing, local listings, reviews monitoring. How many of you have somebody monitoring all the reviews that come in to notify you if there's something negative? One, two, okay. Video, branding, graphics. It's a lot. On this site, there are, there's a container. This container up here would be considered your header. Right there, your navigation. And then second, your, secondly, your slider. One thing that's very important, don't go too technical on your websites. Sometimes they're not humanized. And if it's a female that's supposed to be scheduling time with you, and it, all it is is technical, product pictures and so forth, there's nothing that has an emotional connection with them. It's going to be tough to get them interested. All right. So there are two ways to build websites or to look at your marketing. Traditional website designs, where you design it once and then you wait how long? How long ago was the last time you had your website redesigned? Anyone want to volunteer? 11 months. 11 months, okay. Anyone else? Three months ago. Three months ago, right on. Couple years. Couple years, okay. Anyone else? Couple years. Couple years? Last year. Last year? So think about it this way. If you have your website built, let me pull this up. Right here, and you wait to make changes until here, two years later, three years later, four years later, five years later. What happens during this period right here? Are you at peak performance? Not at all. What technically should be happening, you should be getting a website done as fast as possible, having a strategy team that analyzes the data, see what works, see what doesn't work, and they should be constantly making changes. As technology changes, as we find out that call to action <coughs> button didn't work, people aren't responding to a particular page, your phone number is too small, should have been moved over to the right, should have been in red, the button needs to be bigger, people don't want to get a quote, they want to schedule service, they want to get an online estimate, they need to troubleshoot it. So depending on what people are responding to, we should constantly be evaluating and reevaluating and reevaluating. That way your website is based on a growth design. Constantly searching for peak performance. How is it going to get better? How is it going to get better? How is it going to get better? So it produces more for you faster over a longer period of time. Make sense?
We had already had an existing website that was decent and was working okay, uh, but we really know that the in the future we're going to need to do better, uh, drive more marketing to it, and a lot of our advertising dollars had to go, were going different places. It was going direct mail, it was going to different advertising programs, and we really decided to focus that towards the web. Header versions, the very top of your website. Left hand side, this should be your logo. Remember when I said earlier who you are, what you do, where you do it, how to reach you. All of these elements here, Google Plus reviews, schedule service, online estimate, get an estimate. Uh, how many of you do emergency service? Okay, you want to downplay it or speed it up? How many of you love doing emergency service? <laughs> okay, so we've got to figure out what works best. So we have to keep playing with that. You don't just play with it on your website, but every single time you make a change on your site, you have to consider how does that change impact my view where? Mobile, Mobile tablets, cell phones, 7 inch, 12 inch, 10 inch. <laughs> okay, we have tons of different devices now. Basic things. These are basic fundamental things that really need to be considered or, or on your website. Number one, obviously your header navigation. Number two, <coughs> reviews. How many of you have a page on your website called testimonials? Fantastic. Here's the challenge. If you're looking, if, if I referred you to you, what are you going to Google for? His <coughs> company name plus the word what? Okay, um, well, hang on a second. <laughs> So if I told you you should do business with CI Web Group, what are you going to want to know about our company? What other people reviews. say. What other people say. What would you Google for? <coughs> CI Web Group. Testimonials. Would any of you Google for CI Web Group testimonials? Reviews. Yes. So we make these pages called testimonials on our website, but it's not what people look for. You have to change that. Not only do you have to change that, but if you put... 10 reviews on one page, you have the same issue as your FAQ page. You just have a page called reviews. If you were to take each review and turn it into a blog post titled Northern Heating and Air, you sat in a good spot, lucky dog, Northern Heating and Air reviews colon best HVAC contractor in blank. Next review, Northern Heating and Air reviews colon uh, trusted AC repair service, for example. Imagine if somebody got a referral to your company and they Googled your company name plus the word reviews and boom, you own the first page of Google from your website and everything's leading to you. Not to Yelp, <laughs> where they're going to get a whole bunch of what? Options, right? That's a dealer locator. So they don't just have you, they have 12 other people to call at the same time. Make sense? Next, promotions and rebates. What kind of promotions and rebates are there that you guys need to be promoting? Discounts, specials. In your fall and spring seasons, what should you be promoting? Tune-ups. Tune-ups, fantastic, <laughs> okay. Also, you guys have manufacturer rebates. Manufacturer incentives, tax incentives, federal tax credits. There's a whole bunch of other things we have to think about under this section. Financing. How many of you offer financing? Okay, on your website, do you send them, does it say financing and you send them straight to the financing company? Do you get to collect their information first and then send them to the financing company? So think about that. You always want to collect the data first then give them the resource. You need the lead first. Next, maintenance program. FAQ, terminology page, we talked about that. Troubleshooting system. The quickest way to get a bad review is to go out to somebody's house and all it was was their uh, battery and their thermostat and they get a 49, 69, whatever dollar service charge, right? So if you have a troubleshooting system on your site that allows people to say, I have an issue, it's with my air conditioning, what's not working, it's not blowing cool air, great, have you checked the thermostat? Oh, check. 
And did that fix your problem? If they say no, now schedule service. At least make it available. Social, blog, schedule service, online estimate, and so forth. One of the things that customers really don't like, uh, people, I should say, is they don't like coming to a website and all it does is talk about your products and services. They, they don't know if they need AC repair or installation or replacement or service. What they do know is, I have condensation in my windows. I think I have mold. My energy bills are too high. Are too high. One room's way hotter and cooler than the other rooms. So at some point we need to sink in and get connected with the consumer's issues faster than just jumping into our product sales. Make sense? I think the website looks absolutely amazing. Total professional website. If you go and you look at the competitors, ours is definitely better. How many of you are overwhelmed? <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> That's my fiance. He's like, he just breathes hard and put his hand in there. So this is what we, <laughs> all of the website stuff, just get it done, get it done right, get it out of the way because we have to think about how can we put our dollars into things that are going to produce cash the fastest. And that's tough because it is going to take a little bit of time. So having a strategy, are you going to make a ton of money on social media right out of the gate? No. Do you need to at least look alive? That's it. <laughs> okay. If you really think about business, I'm not going to tell you go do a big social media campaign right out of the gate if your website's broke. <coughs> Everything is about prioritization. You have X amount of dollars and X amount of time and X amount of things that you can play with in order to get results in your business. They have to be prioritized. If your website's bad and you're paying for a pay-per-click campaign, it's not going to convert. Why spend the money? If your website is built with ancient code, built in tables, not responsive, and you're working on graphics for your new pretty slider to promote your new promotion, it's not smart. So everything, and, and this is not your responsibility to decide. This is whoever you're working with. They should be telling you, let's prioritize. What needs fix first? Let's fix the graphics, let's fix the code, let's make sure you have the right content. I have literally talked to hundreds, if not thousands of HVAC companies that are spending between $500 and $5,000 a month on search engine optimization with a website that says, home, about us, our services, FAQ, contact us. Based on my prior explanation, is that cool? No. I've also had them spending that much money on a website that was built in tables, which is called tabular data, which Google doesn't even crawl. That's a problem. Cool? <laughs> okay. So we've got to do it quick. You guys, do you have questions? Other than when am I going to stop because your head hurts? Yes. Um, you, we were on a uh, consultation um, a couple months ago. And one of the things that you brought up at that time was Google, that things that are not involved on Google and they can actually lock you off. Can you speak to that just for a second? Well, there's, lo there's lots of things, yeah. So you have Black Hat SEO, which you've got to be careful you're working with a team because they can definitely promise you and get you to the top of Google quickly and then get you blacklisted from Google for bad backlinks, um, for bad SEO things, for keyword stuffing embedding tons of keywords in the bottom of the page. So if you go to your website and you see 30 service areas or 30 different things at the bottom of your page, or if you're a real nerd or very adventurous, when you're on a computer and you're on Google Chrome, you can right click on your mouse and it'll pull up options and it'll say inspect element. And you can actually see how many key phrases, how much, what's your description look like, how long it is and so forth. If they try and jam in everything into a description, or into your key phrases, absolutely you can get in trouble. There are also stop words. If your permalink, what is that? Everything after the dot com forward slash blank. If your permalink says AC repair in Bloomington, in is a stop word. <coughs> Google will not read past the in. So you just needs to be AC hyphen, not underscore, not forward slash, AC hyphen repair hyphen Bloomington. So there's stop words. So you have code issues. You have scandalous Google smart. <laughs> like, you can't fake Google. You used to, <laughs> but you can't anymore. So those are some of them. What happens if you blacklisted? Uh, you have to go, well, 
<laughs> handy. It depends. So I just tell people that they'll fix it. <laughs> but so their team, if you get blacklisted, literally if somebody's searching for your brand name, your company name, or your name, you're not going to show up. You, there's a medium, which is gray listed, which your, your SEO work's not going to work. You're not going to be found. So number one, they've got to go through and they have to identify all of your bad backlinks. Bad backlinks can not only be given to you by a bad SEO agency you hire, they can also be given to you by who? Mindy? <laughs> competitors. <laughs> your competitors. So if you own a digital marketing agency, you're representing him, and I'm representing him, and I go snag his position one and I move him there, you might not like me or him, so you might give him some bad backlinks. Whoever's working on your SEO, some people call it reputation management, they need to be progressively working on the things that are going to help you move forward, but they also need to be watching Brad over here, because he might be trying to hurt you at the same time. That makes sense? So that's another thing. You have to put in requests with, you have to put in disavow requests for all the bad backlinks. You have to fix everything that's possibly wrong with your website out of three million things that have to be there. And then you have to try and get back in Google's good graces. And sometimes you have to start over. Literally start over. New brand. And of course we'll be double like, we put on SEO, so then backlinking, we have to do double the effort. We have to like produce a lot of content in the back end. It's twice as much effort to fix it than it is to do it right the first time. Definitely say that. Those are really good questions and technical. <laughs> Anyone else? Questions? Yes? Is there a way, I've asked uh, Johnny before, you know, Johnstone has their website, a man's got their <coughs> website, mm -hmm. their trusted sites, you know, a lot of traffic. Yep. And I've asked because my web company that I use my services for asked me to get backlinks from yep. trusted sites to prove a way for them to easily backlink to their dealers. So Amana I know has a dealer locator which includes a backlinking system on it. So yes, you can do that. You can only get one, really okay. count one backlink on there. So that's possible. John Stone, do you guys have a dealer locator on your site? No, we do not. You do not. Okay, we can fix that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I'll pay you later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yes, you need backlinks like that. But it's not two. You need a lot, and you have to consistently be adding them. So, what anybody who's not familiar with backlinks? Okay. I'll go for it. So remember when I was talking about you have to have one page to fit in the drawer? Per phrase and location. That's just going to put you in the drawer, but it's not going to make you number one of 65,000 or number one of 365,000. What's going to make you number one is you have to have other people's websites who are prominent trusted websites give you a testimonial a thumbs up, a review, which basically means they have to have a link on their website to an interior page on your website. You have to constantly be building credibility with Google, no different than with people. Online marketing and offline marketing are absolutely the same. So instead of getting a review from a person, you're getting an endorsement from a third party trusted website. So like we built uh, CIHVAC.com as a dealer locator so we could build backlinks for our clients. We put them on our own sites so we can build backlinks for our clients. We build directory sites so we can build backlinks for our clients as well as we pay for a lot of subscriptions with big website companies that allow us to add backlinks and, and content and so forth. <coughs> That's a good question. Anyone else? Are you ready to go? Ready to go fix this? Okay, so <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> I know this event is just enough to probably irritate you, <laughs> okay, or have you frustrated. So I'm really excited. We are partnering with John Stone and Amanda to bring you guys a dealer education series. It's a webinar series. We've done this for many, many years, and it's broken into smaller bite-sized chunks, not this whole, I'm going to talk about everything related to web search, social mobile, and everything else in one shot. 
But you guys, it's all online. Definitely register for it. The link's right there. If you have people on your team that are part of your marketing process, make sure that they join as well. If you ever miss one, don't worry. You can go back to that same link and it'll have the archives from previous webinars as well. Cool? So it doesn't end today. You don't get excited or get a headache and then lose it all tomorrow. <laughs> Other thing is, for everyone that's attended today, we will do a complimentary, you talked about a strategy session. Was that helpful for you? It was unbelievably great. <laughs> I mean, we learned so much in such a short time. It was exciting. It was, it was just so interesting to that's watch awesome. how you went through not only the website that we were looking at, but you gave us other examples and you were able to show us analytics of other companies that you've done business with. And we could see the analytics of where they were to where they were after you guys had worked with them. And to watch that change and then some of the personal stories of dealers that you know and have talked to was really amazing. It was really a fun hour. I'm going to pay her later too. <laughs> That is awesome. Has anyone else in this room sat on a strategy session with me? Yes. What's your website address? St. Cloud Heating. I know you very well. Fantastic. How was it for you? Headache or? No, it was good. Awesome. Awesome. You guys, this um, during the strategy session, it usually lasts about an hour. I think that's about how long we're on. We can dive into all this stuff on your site. We will go through, analyze, because I said a lot, and every, you know, if you had your site done a long time ago or it's brand new and so forth, everybody's situation is different. So one, you guys will get a complimentary evaluation of your website, it's like 500 pages, but really I'll just talk through it with you, try and make it fun. <laughs> and two, um, you guys will go through and look at your SEO work. What are you doing? What's working? What's not working? Where can you have some improvements? Same thing with social media. We'll also go through and do an evaluation of your local listings you guys familiar with bit local business listings? Google Plus, Yahoo, Yelp, uh, City Search, City Maps, and so forth, Google Maps. So we will pull a report that shows you all 60 of those listings and what you're listed as. We have found businesses that say they're closed. We've had businesses where it's your company name, your company address, and his phone number. <laughs> Not literally, don't fight. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we've had people not own any of them. We've had uh, this all over the board. It's worth it to know how are you listed on all these different sites. We've seen sales reps from one dealer take all of the listings and put their phone number with all of your company's information with, except for the phone number on there on every single listing before. So we've seen lots of different stuff. It's worth it. Also, you guys will get a free listing on CIHVAC, which is our um, beta dealer directory site. And that's for life. No nothing. It gives you a backlink. And if you want to use the site to blog or anything else, you absolutely can. I hope this was helpful. You find it valuable? Yes? Who's going to sign up for the strategy session? Awesome. I would love to have your business card if you would be so kind. Also, uh, Scott is in the back <coughs> and he has a video camera. I know Johnstone would love it if you guys <laughs> like what you hear today. If you have anything bad to say, just stay in your seats. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've got a good review or you want to talk for a sef second, introduce your company and um, tell them a little bit about your experience at the event. You'll get some free publicity because obviously we're going to market the heck out of it. <laughs> and uh, you can also use it on your website and so forth. But you can do that outside. Other than that, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you.